live on Facebook. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for being here at our uh, Monica Campana um, series of um, women entrepreneurs and uh, also people helping people. Today, we have a very special interview with Valerie Rauchi, all the way from New York, who is going to tell us about uh, uh, her background, how did she um, get to where she is today, and um, what is she doing to, to help uh, uh, people improve their health? Valerie, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> the floor is yours. Okay. So, okay. I've been, I spent 25, almost 25 years in the health and wellness, uh, healthcare field, uh, physical therapy assistant, uh, retired out in 2018 and transferred over into the wellness and industry. Um, I've been following a, a healthy, um, lifestyle for the past, I don't know, I say 17 or 18 years. I'm doing my own health crisis, which was a Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but um, I was just like walking around normal one day and the very next day I wasn't. So it was a, a, a quite a pivot to illness. And then it took a year to recover from that. So that set me spiraling into a research mode because I couldn't get well with regular primary physicians or endocrinologists. So they were making me sicker. And so I decided that I better start doing this on my own. And I did as best as I could back then. There wasn't as much information like there is today. So I, I just was did what How I, long ago was it? How long ago was it? It wasn't that long ago. I had like 17 years ago, 17 or 18. Um, yeah, there was like no information on the computer that, you know, was just in one book called Thyroid Power, which I ended up getting. So I did everything that book told me to do, but it wasn't a lot. And, um, so I just, it was, it's been a journey. And then I got married and my husband, the, the man I married had a heart condition that he had from childhood, which was induced by, um, um, too much radiation, chemo and radiation because of, um, Ewing's carcinoma, which is a childhood, uh, bone cancer. So, um, he had been through quite a bit in the medical world and, um, he actually had, you know, heart failure. But I, you know, I married him anyway, I, you know. The funny thing was, he's like, you know, you're marrying a sick man, you're dating. I said, yeah, I've been, I've dated a lot of psychologically ruined men and I seem to come out of that all right. So listen, I think I can handle a sick heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I think don't worry about it. So, you know, I don't know. God just laid out a nice path for us and it's been work. It worked out great, but. He's pre pretty much my first health coaching client. Um, as I was learning and growing in my own health and wellness journey, and then he got sick, and then I had a. I felt like we needed Applying. to ramp apply yeah. what you were learning, also to yeah, and ramp it all up. You know, we had to ramp it all up. So um, we've been on the journey together. He's you know pretty good. He follows a lot of the things, and and I do so much research on unusual different things. Right now we're doing a lot with fenugreek, the spice uh, herb, fenugreek. Um, lots of good things come out of that, helps to lower your cholesterol, blood pressure, um, you know, a lot, lot of good things. Hair helps you with hair replacement and stuff. Um, so we do a lot of different, um, we, I hack, we call it, we hack um, different things to see how well they'll work. And we both try them and things like that. So we have fun with being on the journey of health and wellness and trying very unique, different things. And, um, seems to be panning out pretty well. We both feel pretty good. He's 61 today and I'm 56. So I think we're all right. And, and you have, you have actually a coaching, you started also a coaching. Um... Yeah. I transitioned into the health, health coaching industry as I retired from, um, healthcare, a friend called and said, you need to go to health, um, um, coaching school, Val, so you can be a health and wellness coach. You've been doing it anyway. You might as well get certified. So she was doing it. And she said, I think it's perfect for you. So I said, I'll, I'll give it a try. So I did, and I loved it. Um, and then I just graduated a year ago from the coaching intense practicum. And then I just sat for my national boards exam on um, October 30th and waiting the results of that exam to be nationally certified. 
Wow, wonderful. And you also have the certification from the uh, Institute of uh, Integrative Nutrition also, right? That's where, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. Intense practical, yep, and the IIN program, yep. Yeah, because yep. it's one step up, right? One thing yep. is just to take the normal uh, certification and then you went, you went all yeah. the way to the top. Yeah, it takes a lot, a lot more. Yep, you learn a lot more. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, congratulations. Yeah. I'm sure you, you, you know, and, um, so now, um, so you're offering your coaching, what type of coaching do you offer? I offer online like zoom calls like this. I do, um, everything, you know, uh, I had all these packages and then I started coaching all these people going, every single person is so unique and so different. No more packages. One -on -one. Um, yeah, it has to be one-on-one -on -one and, and it based all around your, specific needs and desires right so you may not be a big reader well in the package number five offers you two books well forget it you're not going to do you're it, never right? gonna get it. Yeah. yeah okay well so that's the reason behind that plus it's it's just more personal i want to have a personal touch to it so that it does look like and feel like it revolves all around you that's wonderful. And so, as you said, uh, one of the obstacles probably has been in coaching has been to apply certain things. So you've been, you've become more personal or is there any other obstacle that you have encountered in coaching? Yeah, I think that two things. One is getting clients is a huge problem. Um, you know, it's not like people are out there networking, looking for a health coach. It's not how it works. I've been in some of the most expensive networking organizations and um, I've learned a lot about how to network, but it's not like I'm going to get clients from all that networking. It just doesn't work out. Um, and there's a lot of MLMs in a lot of the networking. So they're, they're looking to get people in the MLMs. And I love those. I love small industry business, people doing those, Dysogenics, Young Living, all of those things. Um, I think they're fabulous. And even some of the networking um, uh, platforms are the same way. Come join our, you know, because the person is trying to build that business up. Um, so, um, okay. That's one of the obstacles. And, and the, one second of the, one obstacles. Said, yeah. the second one is, is, um, difficult clients. Sometimes, um, people think they're already set and I'm ready and willing to change. And then when you get to about the fourth session, it, the, you can see them backpedaling out maybe the fifth session. You can see them trying to get away. They're like, mm, no, That's it's so starting hard. to show it's rear, it's rearing its ugly head, right? The big problem or the, the, you know, and most people it's in the priority of planning, right? That's usually the big problem. They can have a bunch of behaviors that are going on that are really bad, but if you can get them to focus in on what the priority is in their life and then plan around the priority, well, a lot of that crazy eating and, um, uh, emotional issues will kind of, they'll show up and you'll say, well, why did I do that? Why am I eating like this? Because you've stopped them from running ragged with, and, and, and mindful, using mindfulness to hone them in, you know? So, uh, but again, like I said, it's um, difficult clients can be, you know, 27 medications, sugar diabetics, high cholesterol, already on all these meds, already having symptoms of heart failure. And then you're like, okay, well, we need to, we got to change. Well, what's the first thing? Most times you have to clean out their entire kitchen, their, the refrigerator and their pantry and get rid of all the bad stuff and then give them an alternative list to go to the market and replace. So that all they the have processed foods, all the, yeah. Yeah. And some of it needs to be very drastic because they're in such bad health. And, that's and you actually do that or you oh, tell yeah. them to do it. You do it. You yeah. do it. You go and do it. Yeah. The last one I did was 17 boxes of expired food, bad food, unacceptable food. Wow. 17 boxes. And I don't mean small boxes. Wow. Yeah, it was a big deal. Wow. And then they probably, many don't even appreciate after, after all. They, it's such a big sometimes change. They do. You know, while you're going through the process, it seems like they do appreciate that because they're like, oh, I didn't know or hmm, I, could, I never thought that. And then, you know, it's a whole new world. And then you're like, okay, well now we need about, probably about two to $300 to replace and enhance the stuff we just tossed out so that you're eating healthier. Hmm. Wow. And then they're yeah, like, oh no, forget it. And then they fall back into the, the yeah. previous. I tell thing. everybody, if your refrigerator isn't empty on grocery shopping day, then there's a problem. If it's stuffed to the hilts, 
that's not good. Your, my refrigerator will be pretty close to empty by Wednesday when I go grocery shopping. Yeah, you have to use a, a natural and fresh, the, yep. the, the better. And yep. um, now, what is, your, um, what is your biggest, this is a big question, biggest life regret? Oh, my biggest life regret is not going, is not taking my two-year applied science degrees, one in therapy and one in math and science, and going and getting my master's. But you can still do it. Yeah. Yeah, at six hundred, seven hundred dollars a credit hour, yeah. um, and then I got to pay a mortgage yet, so I don't know about that quite. Uh -huh. I, would, I, I want to. I'm like, I'll, I'll go back for a nurse practitioner. I, I anything a, a bigger than what I'm doing now, because I think with all these little pieces, man, I'm I'm really ready mm, for a bigger yeah. a bigger jump. And yeah. um, what is your most positive life experience? Learning, reading books has been almost phenomenal for me. It's, uh, I, I don't, I, you know, I could tell you a couple of the first books I read. One was um, Creative Visualization with Shatia Gaiwan or something like that. It's probably about 40, you know, about 35 years old. I bought it in Barnes and Nobles when they first came to the area. Um, and that I use those techniques from the day I read that book until today. I still do. And somebody bought me the original book. They found one for me and sent it to me, which is amazing. So now wow. I have it. Back. What is it called? Uh, that sounds um, Creative Visualization by oh. Shakia Gaiwan. Um, it, it used to be purple and blue and pink and had this spiral thing on the front. Now there's like a newer version sort of, and it's kind of yellowish and gold and black and something like that. And what is it based on? What is it based on? Oh, about visualizing the things you want to have in your life and focusing on the positives and not worrying about all the little details that get in the way. So stay focused. And I think a lot of athletes do it. A lot of business, you know, high-end business people, they focus on um, what their vision is and yeah. uh, running. I used, to, with I used to use it when I was like 10 years old. When yeah. I, I, well, I don't know if I told you, but I was, at, well, I was a tennis champ, a national champion in my oh. country. And, um, and I used to do that. I used to visualize. You basically uh, close your eyes and you yeah. see yourself uh, in the court where you need to play. And you see yourself winning and mm -hmm. playing and, and like what you're wearing and, and, and things like very, very, you know, very visual. Um, yeah your mind. And, uh, and I think you can apply it to anything that you do in life, really. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, wow. So that's, uh, that's interesting that you also use that. And uh, you probably teach that to, to people, right? Absolutely. Because, yeah. uh, you have to also retrain the brain when, yeah, you know. Because we have a lot of people who are in like what we call sustained talk. Sustained talk is pretty negative talk. It's not helping you. It's holding you back. And so hopefully in conversation, you can um, create what we call ambivalence. And so when people are really stuck in sustained talk, we try to create ambivalence so that we can start working towards hearing um, positive. Uh, positive talk. I can't think of the word off the top of my head right now. <laughs> change yeah. talk. Yeah. So it's sustained talk versus change talk. And um, that can be difficult, but it can be done. And if people are really open and interested, then you'll start to hear it. You just got to be listening a lot. Wow. So you're almost like a psychologist, right? You, you need uh, yeah. to be, it's a combination yeah. of, uh, of uh, you know, because you need to understand the people and, and, uh, and offer because not just, you know, nutrition wise and also lifestyle, you offer like uh, different types of uh, exercises, right? According Absolutely. To I'm person. a certified trainer with NASM. And I'm a physical therapist assistant for 25 years. So that's all specializing in exercise, right? So I definitely do individual exercise programs. I try to give people a, a, a 10 minute program to start out with. And because most of the clients that I have don't exercise or haven't exercised. So 10 minutes a day is perfect. And then I try to get them on a walking program. Hmm. And basically they, you just, what do they do in 10 minutes? They walk, they do some stretching. No, I, 
play the you know, lots of stretching and moving. Sometimes it's sitting or laying exercises. It depends on their condition because I can do a lot laying down that will get their heart rate up. Um, and I can do a lot in sitting that will get their heart rate up. But then eventually we get to the standing stuff in the kitchen and we're just doing maybe five or six different exercises, maybe three sets of eight or 10, but just to keep going and to get them going. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. And as far as uh, nutrition is concerned, do you have, um, you specialize in many, I, I, I read you in different diets and different types of, uh, according to the person, right? You can offer yep. uh, many are plant-based. Are you vegan? Are you vegetarian or? No, I'm not. I'm a believe in moderation. I teach nutritious. Um, I don't follow any particular program except for gluten-free. Um, and as sugar-free as you can get. If you can, you know, limit your sugar, wonderful. Should you eat fruits and vegetables a lot? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have a uh, misinformation about eating fruit. Oh, you can't eat too much fruit. Yeah, if you're not a raging diabetic, you can eat fruit yes. and healthy eating fruit. But if you've already destroyed your body by eating processed sugar foods, and now you're a sugar diabetic and now they're telling you you can't eat fruit. That's just strange. I know I can't go for that because if you do the, I'll just tell you this. If you follow the super juice me program with Jason Bale, it's a 28 day program and you got to buy a good juicer and you're going to plan on juicing for the 28 days. He's got an app that goes with it. It's phenomenal. You will not be a diabetic anymore. And how would that be if you were eating just fruits and vegetables? Exactly, exactly. So, it, yeah, I, I have a hard time of believing that. Yeah, there's misconception and people don't, yeah, they yeah. don't read yeah. and they just listen to one thing and, and they yeah. accept it as truth. Yeah, and I have my father eating all the raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, mm -hmm. strawberries. That's yeah, good. that's good. Small apples. <laughs> yeah, an yeah. apple. An apple a day, many apples a day. Keep the dog away. It. We don't eat apples anymore. Well, they're not uh, like they're all waxed and perfect, and they put all these. Uh, even mm -hmm. the ones that you buy at uh, even at Whole Foods now, you really have to go. You have to grow your own tree of apples. We have two of them here, but we can't keep the squirrels away from them. Ah, they eat them. They're too it's good. A, you see, the squirrels really, are smart. Yeah, I don't know how the orchards do it, but. Um, we can't seem to get one apple. Wow. Now, um, as far as the courses that you offer or the, the coaching classes, people yeah. can contact you. We have your email. This is the best way to. to yeah, email, you can call me, you know, email. Okay. Um, and I do group coaching. I like to keep it small and simple, like four on four is what I call it. So uh, me and three more. And uh, we meet twice a month. You can do four months. Um, six months depending on the group if it's a you know overweight group then we might need six months but uh if people are in a group and they think they got this and they can get it done then four months is great some people might need four or five calls and that's it mm. and it's all based on where people are at so one of the problems that goes on in the world is all the things that are offered to people to help them lose weight or change or whatever it's all action based here do this Oh, I'm going to go to the gym and do that. Oh, here, eat this. It's just action-based. And that's why nothing's sustainable because the action is unsustainable because they haven't gotten to the behavioral problem of the issues. So until that's tapped into, people it's are going psychological. to... It's psychological. Yep. First you have to... Failing and failing. And you have to be mind, mind, mindful of you what you're doing and uh, yeah. understanding that uh, what you're doing... Uh, is not working and you need to right. change and Absolutely. you need to change yeah. now are you moving slowly to uh, you said me we right yes i am me we and parlay parlor okay. i should okay say. okay yeah so slowly slowly i mean as soon as you have it i'm gonna put it here on this uh, on the post yeah. as soon as you have i'm there it. but i don't have any of the business stuff on yeah. there as soon as you are ready we'll 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 add it and uh, yeah. you know, people will be able to see it. But uh, it seems like, uh, yeah, many people are switching over to this, um, you know, freer, yeah. <laughs> if you want to call it, um, platform. I can talk about everything in healthcare. I can talk, you know, nobody's um, cutting me off. My videos aren't being 
Um, ah, you know. you were being um, bad I, for yeah, talking about health? Vaccines. I was talking about vaccines. So if you, they block you huh. if you're saying anything. You can't say the word COVID huh. and vaccines uh, because they have, they're putting a certain standard protocol together for people in order to be talking about it publicly. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you talk about this stuff, they block your video. Well, hopefully they won't block this one. <laughs> but no, right. <laughs> we said it very, we'll very loud. Don't scream. And um, well, Valerie, it has been a pleasure having you here. Um, Thank you for I I hope that uh, it will um, what you're offering will resonate with uh, many people. Uh, yeah. And. Um, uh, as soon as you have the new platform and everything ready, let us know. I will, I will add it here, and mm -hmm. um, and I wish you good luck because you you know you're helping people um, have better lives and healthier lives, and uh, one person at a time. So Absolutely. it's very inspiring. Keep Thank going, you. never give up, and nope. um, and I hope to see you very soon. So. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and uh, we'll see you soon with, Thank you. Um, with another successful woman entrepreneur. Thank you.